So what what is the fee pool and how are fees on the mining network changing? So the way it works, it, there's a 10,000 Varus test fee for launching a PBAS chain. Because it's not, and there's a, a 200 Varus test fee for launching a currency. And because it's non-refundable, as soon as that definition is mined in, then that um, half of that fee is paid out to the blockchain on that definition transaction, okay? Now, the problem, and I'm gonna, it's not gonna be like your five for a second because this is important. The problem this is solving is that if you leave a 5,000 Varus test fee on a block every once in a while, then miners will eventually figure out, or miners and stakers, that it's really worth it for them to try and reorganize the blockchain so that they get that block after someone else got it. And that is terrible for blockchain security. Okay? They have that incentive. It's a completely perverse incentive. And Vitalik actually raised this issue, and it's the reason for the EIP 1559 that effectively changes the fee model so that they're kind of just throwing away, you know, fees and they're saying, well, minor extracted value can't stop that. So miners get to, you know, become almost like no, gray hats at least on the network, and that's just okay. And this this protocol says no. You know, really, um, if the problem is that someone's going to fight to reorg, then why not just take all the fees and put them into a fee pool that persists block after block, and that, and then let the miner take a percentage of the fee pool after they put all those fees in, okay? So the way it works is a miner takes all of the fees from a block and they put them in the fee pool and then they take, right now on testnet, one one hundredth. And so um, what that does is you have enough incentive to put fees in because one one hundredth doesn't cut like better to take more than less. So you have incentive to put fees in, but you don't get all the fees. And if you miss that block, you have zero incentive to try and reorg the chain to go back and get that block because the next one's almost just as good. And the most incentive anyone has at that point is to just mine forward and converge the chain and the economic activity on the chain that generates these fees because it's valuable economic activity supports the security of the chain and doesn't fight with it. So that, I know it wasn't like you were five, but did that work? Yeah, so it was an excellent explanation and I, I, I literally have no holes in the way this system works. I'm pretty sure now that I think that Varus is basically Ethereum 4, but with Monero added on as, as a side grade, and also it's CPU mineable and ASIC resistant. It, it, Thank you. Thank you for saying that. And I appreciate your comment in the spirit it's meant completely. Thank you.